I'm DJ Treble T from the legendary Rampage Sound System. Now every year, over two million people converge on the streets of West London for the biggest street party and to follow over 70 static and mobile sound systems. A lot of people don't know the origin of the sound system or the influence it has had on UK urban culture. Sound System, succinctly put, is a mobile discotheque. It's a platform on which you play music that moves around. Equipment that you load up into a van and carry to different, different venues. Big stacks of speakers that you can load into a space. Very loud, very well, very spiritual. Sound System is the foundation of all of it, really. Right? That's, that's where we all got our training. That's where we all first fell in love with the music. Rolls in the sound system, you got the box boy. Uh, the box boys were the guys that literally would carry all the equipment, all the, all the stacks, get it from the storage into the van and then out of the van and assembled in the area of where the sound system party was going to be. The man them that string up the sound, you get me? Then you would have the operator who would be, I guess, the technical wizard who would help wire it together and make sure it's tuned and sound right and then probably operate the sound system to make sure it sounds great for the duration of the event. You've got the selector who's selecting the record. Get them out of the box, put them on, take them over, flip, etc. It's just, the, I guess it's the DJ. And you've got the MC who's curating the music. To me, a sound system is like being part of a musical gang. You know, you're not musicians, but you love music, you love putting on events, you love performing to people, playing, entertaining people, and the only way you could do that was via a sound system. They were a gang, but not the sort of gang you'd run from. Sound systems came from the ghettos of Kingston, of Jamaica. The people that emigrated from Jamaica to the UK, they brought their sound system culture with them. So they were challenged culturally. They were also introducing a new music and they had to create that space, which meant on weekends they had nothing to do, uh, nowhere to go. So they had to create that space and that entertainment. If you remember at that time, it was no Irish, no blacks, no dogs. I think the need for a sound system was because we had no access to West End nightclubs. You know, we had very little access to any nightclub, to be honest. It was a place for us to come together and congregate as a community. That wasn't always possible. We used to have to um, use house, houses to make parties and um, really sing about injustices and trials and tribulations, what we go through. Also, you know, have a good time. The sound systems were very important because radio wasn't playing our music, you know, which was probably ska and reggae music. So if the sound systems weren't playing your music, it was very difficult for your tune to be successful. We did a party, we'd, we'd have a van, we had a removal type van, all this equipment would be loaded into the back of the van, we'd go to whatever venue, it's legal or illegal, and it was very stealth. Van will pull up, door would open, electricity gets put on, and then these guys with like military precision be getting these boxes in as quickly as possible and then wired up. The idea was them guys could get it going in 15 minutes. One of my best memories of sound system was arriving before anyone else. And this is Birmingham, this is Quaker City. And it got that name for the, the, the low end frequencies that it pumped out. And I stood in the middle of the hall when they, they turned on and, and played the first tune. And there's something that happens with bass that actually just passes through you and then just resonates in you for a second. That actually you can feel the molecules somehow. There is a certain feeling around that danger of the bass. And sound system provided that interaction with low end frequencies in a way that nothing else did. And you wanted everything to shake. It was very important. It was a sort of, you know, that, it was just crazy. The tweeters were overdone. Tweeters were like shrill. You'd go deaf if you stood up. But that was part of it. That was the joy of it. With the success of Bob Marley bringing reggae to the UK, and the introduction of sound systems to the Notting Hill Carnival in 1973, sound systems grew in popularity and reached a much wider audience around the country. There was actually sound in Bristol, Birmingham, Nottingham, 
Huddersfield, Manchester, Leeds, UK wide. But before us, you had sounds like Duke Finn, you had sounds like Sir Coxon. I think British sound systems were far more eclectic. And, and Notting Hill Carnival was a big reason for that because of the type of crowd that used to come to Notting Hill. It wasn't just a black crowd, it was an, an international crowd. And it meant that you could really flex, play what, play, experiment. So you have Jashaka sound, which is like a root sound, that where it's bass driven. Sounds like Abashanti, Channel One, you know, Iration Steppers. These are bass driven sounds, where it's re roots music, so it's mainly four to the floor, you know, kind of vibes. And then you have sounds like Saxon sound, which is like where I'm from, which is more like a rubber dub sound. Traditional Caribbean, Jamaican, Vibes. You were famous for having MCs, you know, so Saxon was more like an MC sound. It was all about notoriety and reputation. And I still think that is the essence of sound systems. It was never a money making exercise. You want to get known for tunes, you want to get known for having mixing, you want to get known for having a great MC or being a selector or having the best sound. You know, one of those things, but you can't miss the mark on all of them. If you hit the mark on three out of five of them, you're a good sound. If you hit the mark on four out of five of them, you're a great sound. If you hit the mark on all five, you're a legendary sound. Every time you would get two or more sound systems at an event, there would be underlying competition and rivalries. These would be resolved through sound clashes. A sound clash is when one sound comes to show the other sound who's the baddest selector, who's got the most vibes and energies and who's got the best tunes, the best talk on the mic. You come to basically showcase your sound and how it sounds and what music you've got to play and what you've got to offer basically. That's why a sound clashes and the, and the, and the best sound wins. As far back as we can go in the UK with sound systems, we see a relationship to fashion. In the early days, it was weekends. It was the only time you had to dress up and go out. And you, were, you would be attending a sound system. But if you see any footage, especially 70s footage of sound systems, normally you get a guy who looks like he's come from Jamaica, but he's wrapped up warm with a big woolly tam on or something like that, you know. Fashion-wise, you will notice there'll be about two or three guys looking the same, and then there'll be one guy who might be dressed a little bit more neutral. He's probably the soul boy in the sound. By the mid-70s, we'll see that the Jamaican community was bouncing off an American influence, a Jamaican influence, but heavily influenced by even the mods. And we'd see a combination of that in terms of how they dressed. But it was important to be sharp. The Jamaican community would exaggerate certain components. If it was trousers, it would be a little bit short so you could see the socks. If it was a handkerchief in the pocket, it would be a loud handkerchief. If it was a lining of the jacket, it would be a proud lining. So fashion was absolutely critical and the space in which you saw this fashion was in a sound system setting. Well, it's just what you could afford. For me, you know, we wasn't a well-off family. So, you know, I'd have, you know, basically my trainers that didn't have any name. By the 80s, we could see that a uh, combination of uh, Gabici uh, hats, um, Farrah uh, trousers, Italian shirts, crocodile shoes. Particularly when I grew up, a lot of people were wearing Gabici tops with suede collars and stuff like that. They'd be wearing Farrah slacks. We call them Farrah, some people call them Farrah, I don't know why, but we call them Farrah slacks. Or silk trousers even. The sovereign ring was quite popular in them days and the belcher chain you used to have the rope train, and some guys used to have the chaparitas. Saxon sound system MCs, they all had these onyxes, and I just wanted one because they had it. You have to look cush and sharp, have your little, your little towel hanging out your back in case you bust a little one sweat, and have to damp it down. And the girls used to wear pleated skirts, so we used to have a tune called, you know, rub off every pleat in your skirt. So when the guys used to dance with the woman, you know what I mean, we used to whine with them and we used to rub off all the pleats in the girl's skirt, you know what I mean? The sound system, I always say, is the kind of top of the tree of my musical taste, the way I DJ and thus for the way I make records. The, when I'm in a studio, I'm always thinking about how it would sound on a big rig. 
at Carnival over where it might sit in a club. Without the sound systems, there'd be no hip hop, there'd be no drum and bass, there'd be no grime, there'd be no two step garage or none of that stuff. All of those forms of music are played in the sound system way. And, and I feel like usually it doesn't get the credit it deserves. What we're doing now is exactly the same as sound culture or like stage show culture. Sounds like Saxon, you know what I'm saying? When they was the DJ or the selector was spinning tunes and they was just DJing and trying to get a pull up on the, in the dance or wherever they was, it didn't even matter where they was, they could have been in a room with just a man, the man just trying to get a pull up. And that's exactly what man are doing today on, on, on big stages. You can look and see Max and Amisa Select and you've got me, Skep, Wiley, Frisco, Jamie, you know, we're all MC and but back in the day they would have called it DJ and we're still there just trying to get a pull up on the rhythm that's that's wicked and that's what it's about that's what the energy is you know what I'm saying that's what sound culture is